Good morning, Park Lane Church family. Um, Pastor Pete here with another devotional thought. We are finishing up our series uh, inspired by this, uh, this book here, The Deeply Formed Life. And this morning we are going to be talking about the transformative value of missional presence. Um, and before we talk a little bit more about that, I want to read our scripture for the morning, which is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. That's John 3:16 to 17. So what does it mean to be missional in a world that's often, you know, distracted by other things, disengaged um, from from one another, from the things of God. Um, well, we it's all rooted in the character of God. Uh, you know, the the God that we serve is a God of mission. Uh, verse seventeen says that he, you know, that Jesus was sent to save the world. God the Father sent God the Son at Christmas in order that. God uh, would take on flesh and blood and move into our neighborhoods and our cities and be among us. We, we serve a God that came to um, save us. You know, he was sent here. And then in the era that we're living in, the era of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is sending us to our neighbors with this message and lifestyle of, of Jesus, the way of Jesus. And that can be really intimidating until we remember that we all have a story of grace. Uh, you know, as, as uh, somebody told me recently, just tell them what Jesus has done in your life. Uh, you know, we oft, I find that I need other people to help me discern where God is moving in my life. Um, and I think we, we all need each other to help us tell that story of grace, but we have a story. Uh, we have a story, and so that's uh, that's what it means to be, you know, missional. To be a little, um, to be a um, a missionary of God's grace, you know, right where we are at, and to say, God, what are you up to, and how can I join you in what you're doing? So it's really, I think it's two things. I think it's presence and posture presence and posture. Rich talks about this in his great book. Um, but first it's, it's, uh, you know, presence later in, um, John, it's just really the next page, John five, 17. Jesus says in it, my father is always at his work to this very day. And I too am working. God the Father is always at work. What an incredibly comforting thought that we don't need to bring God's presence into a situation, but he's already working. I say that on Sunday mornings, you know, that God beat us here this morning. He's already here. And yes, it's true in the church sanctuary, but it's also true where you live, where you work, where you play, in your car with you as you're driving around. God's presence is there and God is available. And God isn't just present to me and you. He is present and he is available to everyone. You know, God is moving. I love, you know, C.S. Lewis in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Aslan is on the move. Aslan is on the move. God is moving. Uh, we went on this retreat last weekend as uh, council members and it was just so incredible to hear people share the story of what God has done in their life. And I just had this thought, you know, where would I be without Jesus? Where would I be if God hadn't moved and had revealed him, his own presence to, to me? And that's true for, for all of us. God is present to us. And uh, then second, the second thought would be, you know, posture. What posture are we taking toward our neighbors that uh, may not know Jesus. Uh, again, I come back to that John three sixteen. for God so loved the cosmos. God so loved 
the world. And that's, that's a really basic idea. God is bringing his children home. God is bringing his children home. See everyone through that lens. You know, that it's just another son of God, another daughter of God, another child of God that belongs to his family. And God might want me to play a role in his ever-present work. You know, so, we, so we're encouraged to put ourselves in situations where we're surrounded by people that don't believe like us so that we can, yes, speak words of comfort, speak words of love, but also live live out the gospel, live out the way of Jesus and what he's done. Not get stuck in our little Christian silos, but be rubbing shoulders with our neighbors that might be distracted and disengaged and share with them what Jesus has done in coming to earth, laying down his life for them, rising again, and bringing to us a totally new way of living. I hope that resonates with you this morning and have a wonderful day. I'll see you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock in our backyard. God's peace to you.